Um, wait, what? I think I just made a game that plays itself. <laughs> Perfect. So everybody knows this annoyingly simple game called Flappy Bird. Everybody's made a clone of it, except me. There are so many versions of it that I lost count. Flappy Bird with RTX, Flappy Bird in 3D, first person Flappy Bird. Like what the hell does that even mean? Don't get me wrong, these are all cool games, but I just don't have the space on my computer to make another Unity project. But what if I make a really, I mean really small game? So small that it could fit into this. This guy has done it. I can too. Or can I? Okay, I'm not gonna do that lame video intro where you pretend to get a comment saying I bet you can't do that. Maybe just once? So I recently got a comment that said why don't you try to make a game in a QR code? Or you can't do that? That never gets old, does it? <laughs> Let's just make this game already, okay? So you all know what a QR code is. It is the black and white thing you use to store data. Most people use it to share links to their stuff. QR code typically stores text, but it can also store binary data, which means that anything, anything on your computer can be stored in a QR code. As long as it's less than 2.88 kilobytes, of course. That's so tiny. But that used to be a lot back in the day. This is what 5 megabytes of data used to look like in the 50s. It was about the size of two refrigerators. And now I bet you don't even notice when a random file of this size shows up on your computer. And since I always run out of memory on my laptop, this is about the perfect size for a game for me. So the first thing I did was watch the other video. I know, I know, I'm not new, not original, this has been done before, but I just wanna try it. You'll watch tutorials before you make something. First thing I found out is that all the games up to 90s were written in assembly language. And I thought I didn't study game dev at college. So to make use of the absolutely useless assembly class that I had in college, I decided to write my game in assembly language. Am I going to regret this? Yes. Yes, of course. I looked around the code, started getting really anxious because it was not a pleasant experience the last time I coded with it. So I decided to save both time and nerves and think of a different solution. The other option was to write a C program to fit into a QR code. But do I really want to go back to C? Nope. Learn how to work with graphics in it? No. Wait, I cannot use classes? That's a hard no. So I went on the internet to search for how I can make a tiny game and found... Unity Tiny? What is that? Unity's Project Tiny is a set of workflow features and a specialized build pipeline that allows you to create small lightweight games and apps of 2-3 megabytes. Megabytes? Uh, no, that's not gonna work. Next! I kept searching for a way to put a game into a QR code and I found this weird open source engine called Rootro. And it was exactly what I needed. At this point you're probably wondering, Tamara, what are you talking about? Okay, so there is this guy on GitHub that made a weird retro game engine to make tiny games, put them in QR codes and send them as Christmas cards to his friends and family. No links, no downloads, just a game on paper. That's kind of genius. Well, why didn't I think of it? Oh wait, you're asking how this actually works? Like putting a game into a QR? I have no idea. So the first challenge was to make this thing start. I turned to manual, of course, because I like manuals. Feeling like a super programmer who uses command line for things, I set up a PHP server and got this console page. The scripts for this engine are JSON files. Not this JSON, this one. Well, hello world! 
Yep, my first program that I copied and pasted into a new file. What a masterpiece. Then I exported this uh, game into a QR code. And uh, how do I run it? Okay, you do need one link to scan it and convert it into a playable game. It is part of the open source package, so you can host that web page locally, but the author also has it on his website. Okay, so now that I am a super skilled router programmer, I can get to coding my own game. But first, I need graphics. Eh, I thought this day would never come. I'm making pixel art, people. After a few hours of struggles, I managed to make this bird look decent. I only used default colors, so it actually shows up in the game. But then I decided to define my custom palette and I had to remake the bird. I also made these pipes and even made them move. I'm using that endless runner approach when you move the background but the character is stationary. But this is a heavy bird because it falls. Probably like an ostrich or something. Then I tweaked a few things and um, wow, the game now plays itself. Mission accomplished, I guess? I struggled to get anything else to work, but then I found this. Um, you guessed it, there was already a Flappy Bird game in the sample project. Why did I expect that it wouldn't be here? It's like the most annoying, um, I mean, popular mobile game ever. So the next logical step for me is... Um, And as any respected game developer would have done, I copied the code, pasted it into a new file and called it my game. Just kidding, none of these options are actually for me. I'm gonna try to understand this code and mix it together with what I already have. One eternity later. And there you have it. So let's try to scan it and see if it works. So I turned off the internet connection on my laptop and uh, I have my game here. Yeah, it's a few QR codes. And now we're gonna see if it's gonna actually run on my computer. Okay, this is way easier than that version that I found online. This is definitely better. Okay, I still can't get really high score, so... Guess this is just me. Now I have this crappy flappy bird. Maybe I should just call it crappy bird? Yeah, that's better. I literally cannot get past one in this game. Ah, mine is definitely better, even though it has a crappy name. <laughs> That's it for this video, so thank you for watching, subscribe to my channel and drop me a comment. Phew, this video was quite a lot of work, so please give it a lot of likes, people. Also, I'd like to thank all my patrons for supporting me and welcome new members, especially NFT Gamer Echo and Sean S. 